uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but I instinctively left town. <laughs> and now I'm back over here after I beat the gym. Um, today, I was gonna talk about... I was in the middle of talking about this in the Bleed playthrough, but uh, I ran out of time because the game was over. Also, Mud Poop Sling keeps the missing, and it makes it very, very difficult to fight. But uh, about microtransactions and and freemium games and all that stuff, um, I forgot to mention how I feel about DLC and season passes? Okay. DLC is, to me, added content. It's designed to expand the game um, in some way. Like, So Calibur 5 had, like, costume packs. Um, they add to the game. Y there's already, like, a big costume selection from the for the character creator anyway so seeing more of that is actually kind of cool now I wish there was a DLC for not a shitty story mode but beggars can't be choosers um I'm supposed to go to the marts there's some stuff in the marts for me now which guy do I talk to the one in the suit or the one in the suit uh, I want to talk to this guy good evening I have actually from your mom oh here you go it's the super potion. Okay. And the DLC I'm used to. Now, I've already used Togepi before, so I don't want to use that Pokemon when I get it. Um, I'm probably just going to put it <laughs> in the PC, like right now. Uh, yeah, I don't care. I don't want it. Um, and the DLC I'm used to is. Except like extra fighters, like I bought Dampierre before in Soul Calibur 5, even though I don't think that game should have fucking fighter DLC. Because the roster is already so low anyway. It shouldn't have all the fighters from the start. Anyway, <laughs> I don't remember what she said. Um, <laughs> sometimes I wish I was a fish. Um, can I go this way? Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay, cool. I wonder if that changes depending on what your starter is. But, um, anyway. The... Also, the other kind of DLC I'm used to is, like, um, extra stages. I bought DLC from... Uh, Hyper Warriors. I bought DLC for... Pyro Emblem, like that kind of paid content is is good. Like or like extra storylines and um, extra factions and kingdoms of Alamor, Alamor Reckoning, like stuff like that. Like that's a good idea. Like it's it's stuff to add to the game after you've already finished it. It's not like oh shit. It's not like a. Uh... It's not like a $60 game with like almost no game, and then they release that shit later, you know? They were designed after the facts, you know? It wasn't like withheld content like in Destiny, you know? And I think season passes have gotten a lot worse for AAA video games over time. Like, I don't play those kinds of games, like I said earlier, but if you look at something like the NBA games or, N or the football games, and um, their descriptors for- oh, that, I saw that game, I saw that, don't you, don't you dare do that. Okay. <laughs> um, if you look at the past descriptions for what they have, it's getting less and less over time, and I really don't see why don't they don't just put out the full game. Actually, I know why, and I don't like the answer, but 
it, it makes the the base game look so pale in comparison that it may, they want you to think that you're getting a better deal by getting the season passes of these things, but like it's awful. <laughs> I think they've been just getting worse over time. They've been trying to see what they how much less they can put out in the game's first iteration to make you think you're getting so much more with a season pass. And the thing is, you don't even get that content right away. It's always like, you get the season pass, you get the thing... You get the update that comes like fucking 10 months from now. Like, cool. Thanks Fallout 76. I don't even play Fallout games. And I feel for those people. Because they're getting fucked over. Also... Um, Elder Scrolls people... Um, you know, what's Blades? Blades was there. Um, it's literally a weight simulator because <laughs> you you go up to go build a thing and now you have to wait 80 years for it to go, or you can pay to have it finished. Uh, like crap, like that, or like the Harry Potter game where your character is caught in like a, a tentacle or something and. The game's like waving in front of your face, like, we better, oh no, you're gonna have to wait or spend some jewels to get out of the situation to keep playing. It's like, okay, what's the game anymore? What did you do? What is this crap? Like, that kind of season pass, or that's not even season pass, but like, you know what I mean. Season passes have gotten worse over time. And. I don't even remember. And the thing is, they release. Let's say you don't get the season pass. They were. They're going to release that content separately anyway. They want to see if you'll give them money up front before they put out what they put out. Like, that's the experiment. And a lot of people fall for that shit, and that's why they keep doing it. Um. Oh, poison type. I have never used Arbok before. So I'm going to get Arbok. <laughs> Uh, hey Rupert, don't kill him, because that would be ungood wise. I feel like I'm going to have a way tough time if I use, <laughs> if I use that Pokemon, but whatever. It's all about the experience and seeing Pokemon I've never used before. Um, I think it's going to be a good counter to maybe ghost types or something. I don't know, because he learns like crunch or something, right? Hopefully it's a decent nature, if it's not, fuck me I guess. That thing is six foot? Ekans is six foot. Needle King is four foot. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> because Needle King is like four foot something, I remember this. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I like how Pokemon is the only game where you can get a girl's phone number after having a Pokemon battle with them. Because in real life, it doesn't quite work the same way, if you really think about it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, and that's all I have to say about that. Actually, not quite. I'm still mad at, like, what's the word? Premium games in general, because uh, I I broke the news to my uh, Kingdom Hearts Unchained X like Discord group that like I'm done playing and uh, I'm gonna talk a little about about that because Kingdom Hearts Unchained X story. Um, it's getting kind of weird. They finally got to a wreck at Ralph Worlds, which I'm surprised Kingdom Hearts 3 didn't do. But yeah, there's actually a whole a world in Kingdom Hearts Unchained X. It has its own like logo theme. I think it's called like the Arcade Life or something. Um, but. Fix It Felix Jr. has its own place, and that's cool. It's like it has its own battle theme. Like Yoko Shima, there's like a new b battle theme for the Wreck It Ralph world, and I 
I wish that was not in a fucking stupid app game, you know? Um, gosh. But the, the story in it now is that the world is actually a computer simulation and there's a, a virus. There's a guy saying he's going to become the metaphor that will save the system the brain. The guy, whatever the fuck. Like, why? What is this? Well, I have Intimidate. That's good. I forgot to look at its nature, but it's probably bad anyway. <laughs> Does it matter? Now what happens? Now we never lose a fight. And Maleficent is like billing, Bill and Tedding it up here. She's traveling through time, I guess. But back in time is not really back in time. It's <laughs> it's a digital world. I I don't like where this is going anymore. Um, and they're explaining that there's this world made up of books and that's how they're because they're explaining the way the events the same events play out um, to the avatar character in Unchained X the same way with Sora in, in his games is that the ones that the avatar character is going through are all actually simulations of the future <laughs> so I don't just, I just don't fucking understand and Maleficent is talking to a character named Darkness it's whatever who cares about anymore oh and a little thing more about the like the season pass culture is that eventually the games that have those microtransactions in this and everything you have to consider the fact that eventually they're going to become unsupported and they're just going to disappear like forever and all that money and time you poured into is just going to be gone in a flash like that happened with sonic runners um like you can't you can install the game if you've already installed it you can check your library but uh once you try to run it it'll s try to connect you to the server and say, thank you for playing Sonic Runners, this game is unsupported now. Thanks for giving us all your money, basically. Um, I think, aside from the actual bullshit that was programmed to the, into the game, with the, the spiky balls like happening during a really good run, um, that game had microtransactions too. You could buy the in-game currency that let you get um, like special skins for characters like you had the uh, like the Halloween set that let like, you get sh like vampire Sonic or whatever and witch Rouge or whatever and um, there's also like the partners the little partners you could equip there's like special themed versions of those, like there's like the Halloween Chow, the Easter Chow, like the Easter Egg Ship, you know, Sahara from Sonic Rings, like there was like partners like that, that all the different things that would follow you during the stage. And it was actually pretty in-depth with its own like metagames. And the thing is, it was all, it wasn't really competitive, it was just, here's a game where you can like progress the way you want to. And you can just play to get a high score because it, it is kind of skill based. Um, it's not really luck based because you are, even though it's an auto runner, you are platforming and you are like making jumps and doing maneuvers and shit. And uh, let's say someone paid money to that, it's gone forever. Like everything they've invested into customizing this stuff is gone forever. And. I just found out Anthem, a game I don't even play, is about to like get to pull the plug. Um, people are speculating they might put out Anthem 2, but that in a game that's like probably mostly pay to win anyway, they're gonna feel pretty silly like letting their customers put money into that. Actually, they they probably don't feel silly. Um, the customers are probably gonna really feel silly putting money into that. Um, and it's just gonna get like unsupported by the end of the year <laughs> like um, 
they all had. Oh, it, the thing about recent AAA games is that they're all putting out their um the roadmaps. They're the thing that's not there at launch that will be there eventually. Then that'll make it good. It's like they're trying to make games into putting a down payment so that eventually it'll be good <laughs> instead of making it good in the first place to give people a reason to play the damn thing. And that sucks. And I I'm glad I don't play those games. <laughs> I I kind of... I didn't even try to get into Warframe. Uh, I just couldn't control it very well and I was frustrated a little bit. Like I didn't like the the PCS controls, like the the left stick move, the right stick was the aim. It's like I don't want this right now. <laughs> I just want a hack and slash game without this kind of controls. And uh I, I wish I gave it more time. I guess I still can because it's free. But and everyone's saying this is like the better free to play game. It's not quite pay to win. And that could change. It is owned by, you know, one of those companies. Um, so, yeah. For one million dollars. Oh boy. Yes. I thought these kids were days were loaded. Well, let me tell you about kids these days. We eat ramen and. Uh, we think we're saving money by not eating, but we're actually dying a little bit inside each day. Um, time to rescue Pokemon. I, I think if you have to pull out a roadmap, like basically a promise sheet for things that are going to come to your game, they will not be in the game at launch, then that's pretty pathetic. And I can't believe people are like paying into this shit still. Like, you don't have to settle for this shit. Like, why? Like, my taste in gaming has is pretty much shifted to from shifted to indie games because Nintendo games that I'm interested in are taking too long to come out. So I'm, in the meantime, there's like a bunch of good indie games out there. That I've been pouring my time into, like Dead Cells, um, Flint Hook. I love, I still love Flint Hook. I finally, when I bought it for my Switch, I, yeah, I broke my rule of like not buying the same game twice, but um, I was actually wanted to finish finishing it because uh, when it, when something's on the Switch, it's a console you can actually like play, um, while you do something else. Like, when I played Flint Hook on my computer, I had to not have everything else open, and that kind of sucked. But when I had, I don't know, the Switch, I could watch YouTube, I could go in the living room, I could do other things inside of sitting inside of my hot room and play Flint Hook. Um, so, like, it. I was more interested in finishing it. Um, and indie games are still, are still good on the PC. Or however you can get them, basically. And like I'm hoping, you know, publishers catch up on this crap. Or they realize that what they're doing is crap. And you know, they start putting out like good games. Like I still think it sucks what happened to Crash Racing. Even though I don't like Crash, that still sucks. What kind of moves does Ekans have? Nothing. Um, and I think the, need, the new Need for Speed game is going to come out. And they have had to promise there won't be any microtransactions now. They, they might also try the let's wait until it's released and then put microtransactions in it um, thing. But it's it's come become a sad day and age where a game has to promise that they won't put microtransactions transactions in it that'll ruin the meta game and the experience in order to sell it. Cause that's never the selling point of a game. 
Or it's like, guess what guys, we have microtransactions. Don't wanna wait to be good? Just pay now and have everything. There's no game anymore, guys. <laughs> and I'll talk about this in a different episode about the gambling thing. Cause uh You know, it is kind of weird that this okay, Pokemon Sword and well, <laughs> Soul Silver and Gold Town or whatever. They have had their gambling thing their slot machines out of their arcades. And um, they've been put in this that weird like roulette. It's not even a roulette, it's like I don't even know what kind of game it is. It's just not the slot machines. Um, I think Platinum and this game stopped having the, uh, the slot machines. And, uh, which is weird because now Rockstar, like, proudly announces that they're putting a real, actual gambling casino in Grand Theft Auto or Grand GTA Online like have we come so full circle that the pretend gambling is bad and the real gambling is good like what does what like Pokemon A rated E for everyone has is marketed towards children but it doesn't involve real money and saying that this could lead to real gambling proves nothing. And yet here we are. You know, the GTA Online casino, Diamond Casino, it uses real money, but you do not earn real money. That doesn't make any sense. Why would anyone do this? <laughs> it's not even a a real casino you buy you spend real money to get play money to you, you don't to earn back the play money that doesn't make any sense how is anyone gonna cash in on this they don't they just they're paying Rockstar or the publisher whoever the fuck idea it was can't escape oh this hurts had a okay well, I guess I'm gonna have to get out of this cave somehow.